I was born in San Francisco. You were? Yeah, my dad, my dad uh, grew up there back and forth and he worked there. My mom was from the Central Valley and they met up and I was raised there. And I've pretty much sang, act, did all that since I was like able to talk. But I guess that wasn't like, so, you know, you weren't serious. You just sang as a kid, right? And then I, I've always wanted to do that. I told my mom, oh, I want to be a singer so bad. I want to do this. Everyone in class was like, I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a police officer. I was like, I want to be a singer. I want to be like the next Britney Spears. I was like, I looked up to her when I was younger and that's pretty much what I want to be forever. And um, that's pretty much how I'm here. But I never stopped. I did like my voice coaching. I did acting classes. I met with a coach. I think it all kind of goes hand in hand, anything in like the entertainment industry, but I've been doing that for since I could walk. You don't reside in San Francisco these days. No, my family does, but I am in LA. And what age were you when you made that move? Well, I would drive there back and forth when I got my license, like for work or for auditions and stuff like that to like network and meet people by myself. It was pretty crazy. Sometimes I slept in my car, actually. Mm. <laughs> uh, I got a ticket one time sleeping on the side of the road because I couldn't go home. I was too tired. Um, but then I made the move about seven years ago. I see. And that was strictly a career choice. Oh, uh, yeah. Strictly a career. Yeah. I didn't want to, I'm like a huge family person, so family oriented. So it was really hard for me to leave. But I was like, well, I can't do what I want to do here and everything's over there. So I got to make the move. Somebody watching this that might not be familiar with the West Coast, how far is San Francisco to LA? Probably like seven hours, six, seven hours drive. I see. Drive. Fly probably an hour. And when you say that uh, you, you made a trip or two and you had to sleep on the side, that was probably the safe thing to do. Probably. Right? <laughs> My I, mom I've... almost killed me. But yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't like old enough to get like a hotel and... I would tell my, like, I'd be like, Mom, I'm staying with friends because I wouldn't want her to not let me go. And I would just, like, chase that dream and do what I got to do and, like, go home. <laughs> Sometimes I knew I was like, I can't. Like, I, I was like, I can't believe people, like, fall asleep on the road. And I started doing it and I was like, I got to pull over. <laughs> well, they say that sleeping or driving sleepy is just as bad as driving drunk. I agree. Because <laughs> you really don't know when you're about to shut your eyes. It's pretty scary. I won't do that again. Was there ever a time you were almost close to an accident because you were driving while you were sleepy? No, I never let myself get to that point. Because oh, okay. you always think like, oh, it won't be me. No, I always thought it will be me. <laughs> that was me. I was always like the warrior. So I always made sure I cut it. <laughs> so when you would pull over, where would you pull over at to sleep? Are we talking? I would just like go to like a parking lot. I mean, I'd make sure it was safe. <laughs> like a hotel parking lot or something? Yeah, I usually have lit? like a friend with me every time. Like I would just be like, oh my God, whatever. And just like pull over for like three hours and then go. <laughs> you sleeping like in the uh, driving seat or you yeah. like uh, yeah, I would jumping just lean in the back? back and... I would just lean it back. Yeah, I kind of learned that from my dad when he would commute to the Bay Area. I kind of got that from him. But yeah, I would just do it. I mean, music is life. You can't. You can't not do that. I feel like I wouldn't be here if I didn't make those decisions to do what I did and get to where I needed to be. You know, you have to grind. I see a lot of people, and uh, I posted something the other day, and it's like they see you getting the success they think they deserve for the work they didn't put in. And I'm always like, just before I came here, I got probably, well, I got a good night's sleep last night, but I shot two music videos back to back for my upcoming singles, Taste and um, Role Play. And they were two 18 hour days. And like, I was, my sister's like, you're still awake? I'm like, yeah, I'm still awake. I gotta go to Atlanta. I got these interviews, you know, gotta meet with DJ Smalls, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and we appreciate that. Now, um, uh, you still visit uh, San Francisco. You go back and forth. How often yeah. do you go uh, these days to see I try family to get my here? parents to come out here more. Oh. Um, it's like hit and miss, maybe every like three months, maybe. But they come here more often than. Go to L.A. more than you go to the Bay. Yeah, I can't really leave. I'm so busy, mm. you know? So I'm just like, you guys come here. I'll take care of it. Like, I'm doing this, doing that. They came to my music videos, which was really cool. They got to see, like, the behind the scenes and the making of a video and the music and all that. So that was pretty cool. Now, was it a certain part of San Francisco that you <laughs> represented or you grew up in specifically? No, I was just pretty much around Market Street, around the mall. And then uh, we moved to San Jose. And then they moved to the Central Valley and back and forth. So it was, like, everywhere. We would just pretty much San Francisco. Growing up in San Francisco, what was that like for you? It was fun. I think that kind of made me who I am, like with my music and like being like kind of a little bit R&B, as well as like the pop like image that I have. I grew up listening to Too Short, you know, the masterpiece. The, I, I was like huge in rap, which is like funny that I'm like not a rapper, um, but I can rap. 
But yeah, I grew up listening to rap, all the Bay Area, the the E40s, the Be Legits, the all of those. I think that was that plays like a huge role into like who I am and the kind of music I listen to and like. I'm very I'm like an old soul and I like like the old school music, so I'm kind of like trying to do that, but like with the new age music to make it make sense. So that kind of plays a role in with everything I'm doing. You grew up in a two parent household. Four until I was six, and then my parents got a divorce. And it got really bad. And then it was a single mom situation. I see. Uh, and that was out of your control? Yeah, mm. of course. Of course. I think it's better now, though. A lot of people I know sometimes are like, oh, yeah, like I'm this way because my parents. I'm like, well, my parents are way better. I'm like, they're way better, like, not together. <laughs> they both, like, separated. And then they both, like, my mom remarried. My dad has a girlfriend. I like them both, thankfully, because that wasn't always the case. But yeah. Um, they're much better apart, <laughs> so I'm good with that. You have a good relationship with both these days? Yeah, with my mom and my dad, yeah. Mm. Very close. Even though they separated, how often would uh, your biological father be in the picture? Mm, not a lot. Okay. I wish it was more, but uh, yeah, he, uh, he worked a lot, and he did a lot of things. I saw him on weekends and stuff. You know, he was busy, but more than I should. My mom played, like, a bigger role. But, yeah. Was there ever, I mean, obviously you guys are on good terms at this point, as you stated, but was there ever, was there ever resentment towards him back then? <laughs> oh, yeah. Was there ever yeah. bitterness? Oh, yeah. I, like, threw fits all the time. I didn't like most of his girlfriends. I didn't want to go over. It was, like, a big thing. It was a huge thing. But, I mean, now we're good, and now I'm older, and I'm doing my own thing, so... You know, but they they but they both support my music. When I when I started doing this, and I was like, Dad, I'm working with Master P. He's like, What? Because he listened to him too. He listened to rap and stuff like that. So we be, we shared our music together. Like our relationship was like heavily with music. Me and my dad. So when he found that out, he's like, Oh my god! They all knew it. They all saw it coming. Because I said it since I was young. I was like, I want to be a pop star. I want to be in music. I want to do this. I want to be on the big screen. I want my name in lights. I want this. And then they're like, Oh my god, Lisa, you're doing everything you said. This is crazy. <laughs> Now, just curious, uh, how did that relationship get to the point where it's at now? Which one? It, the relationship with your biological father. I had to force it. I had to, like, put my foot down and stuff because a lot of stuff happened. Um, and, like, it's, there was just so many things that happened. And I was like, Dad, you need to either step up and hang out with your daughters and, like, be a family or I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> mm. I see. Yeah. Now, um, you had a step parent. Yeah. Uh, at what age would you say? My stepdad. I think I was fourteen. Okay. Yeah, fourteen. And good relationship with your step parent. Yeah, he's great. He just came to my music video with my mom. Very nice. Two days ago. Yeah, he's amazing. Now, when I do interviews with people that uh, have a separation of parents, and there's a step parent that comes into the picture. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do an interview with somebody and it's a good, healthy relationship, <laughs> everything's fine, and then it's the opposite. It's a horrible yeah. relationship, things never work out. Yeah. Why was your relationship with your step-parents so good when I've interviewed others and it wasn't so good well, for Well, on my dad's side, it wasn't good at first. That was pretty bad. He right, got, you said you had issues with some divorce. of his girlfriends. Yeah, but my mom, she always put us first, and she was like, okay, my kids come first. Like, this is what they do. You know, this is what they do for a living. Like, she always talked about this is what my daughter does. This is my other daughter. I have a sister. She's also into music. We have a huge musical family. Um, and so, yeah, she pretty much, like, didn't introduce us to anyone until they were, like, really serious. And he's just been great. He's super great. Now, somebody watching this, of course, every scenario is different, every story is different, but somebody watching this that has to deal with a step-parent. Do you have anything you would say to somebody going through those motions themselves, whether it's good or bad? Do you just have any, anything you would say to somebody that has to Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to let go of, like, how you feel about your parents and wanting them to be together and thinking that was supposed to be the thing and, you know, other people's parents are together. You just really have to just pull it within yourself to just know that they're happy. And if they're happy and they treat you right, of course, then you kind of got to let it go because you grow up and do your own thing too, you know? Mm. Now, financially back then, how did you grow up? Mm. Was there a certain class financially you would kind of describe? Probably yourself? middle. Middle class? Yeah, I always, I don't like when people say I came from nothing because I feel like I came from two loving parents. We had a roof over our head. We had food. We had clothes, you know? So I feel like that's not nothing. That might not be money. But that was something, and um, I'd rather take a good relationship with people and your family and parents over anything. I feel like that's most important. So over money and anything, I'd rather have that. Mm. So, uh, yeah. 
Middle class. Lower middle, middle, class, middle yeah. upper middle? Just the middle? I think middle, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like being with my mom being a single mom, and that's kind of when I picked up and I started, I was like, okay, I want to do something. And then I started doing that, and it came into music, and now I'm like, okay, well, I'm set in this area, you know, with music. I mean, obviously not exactly where I want to be, not yet. But, uh, yeah. I see. Uh, and just curious, even growing up in middle class, um, what did that teach you? To appreciate things <laughs> and people, not necessarily things, I guess. That's like the wrong way to put it. But I mean, I guess the things that you do have, you know, because sometimes I would see kids, they would have like really nice things and their parents would drive really nice cars. And and I never really idolized that kind of stuff. I kind of feel like, I mean, that's cool. You know, I'm not really like that kind of a person. I'd rather, again, just have that connection with your family and, and the support because not a lot of people have that. Mm. You know, you can have all this money in the world and you can have all these things, but you don't have that foundation to keep you grounded. So... Just curious, when you do see people with the nicer cars and the nicer things, do you try to earn money yourself early in life? Or because that's yeah. not something you were really worried about or, yeah. or you really I mean, valued? I'm not saying compared... that you don't want it, right? Okay. You probably want it. There's always nice things that you have. But it's funny because uh, I, I had this car when I was younger. I had a Lexus IS300. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And then I didn't get a car until I was 17. Again, it was an Audi. And then uh, I just got a Ferrari last month. And I'm like, wow, I have a Ferrari, but I feel no different. <laughs> you know, it's like you don't feel any, any different. It's just, it's cool. It's something cool to have. But again, I feel like it comes back to like the values of like things. Because like I feel like I'd rather once you have like the necessities, you know, with the support, the family and all that. I feel like that stuff is just kind of like an accessory. It's cool. It's fun to have, you know. How young were you earning money back then? I started working with my stepdad. He does creating and like packaging for like, he did it for like all these like rich and fancy VIP people and like famous people and companies. I started doing that um, really early on. And then I started modeling uh, and that led me to music. So I did that to kind of fund my music and pay for my music. Cause that was always my end goal. But again, I didn't have like that co-signer. You know, I didn't have that masterpiece at the time. I didn't have, I just had me. So I was doing whatever I could do to fund music and be in the studio and, you know, buy microphone equipment at my house to do videos and uh, invested in a piano. And, you know, I, I researched like really good voice coaches and I, I went that route. Like everything I made, every dime I made went to funding my music. Mm. Uh, so you had the stepdad gig, you had modeling and then music. Mm -hmm. Ever had like a like a regular job? A regular job. One I mean, maybe the stepdad <laughs> one counts. I don't know. Yeah, kind of. But, but like, I mean, one day I was a hostess for three months. I mean, three weeks, three days. Three days I was a hostess for three days. Gosh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I can't give myself that much credit. Uh, yeah, and it, no, I can't. I can't have a boss. I can't work under someone. I have to just be my own thing. I have to wake up and do what I want to do. Uh, I went to nursing school, actually, mm. um, as a backup, but... I always knew that end game was music. So I was like, everything I do, I needs to be able to fund my music. What can I do that makes a lot of money that's good that I can still just do music and fund my music? That was just my thing, my thing. And then you just keep doing it until your side hustle becomes your main hustle. And that's what I did. <laughs> and now we're here. <laughs> I see. Uh, and what, I don't know if you care to share, what age were you when you tried the hosting thing? I think I was like 16. Like it was like when you could first get a job. My mom was like, you got to get a job, Lace. And I was like, I don't want to. And then I did. And I hated it. So then I was like, all right, that's it. I got to do something on my own. I got to figure it out. And I don't know how, but I did. And I figured it out. And I'm here. <laughs> was it a local restaurant or it was like a chain, like a franchise restaurant? Um, it was, no, it wasn't. A, it was, oh God, I can't remember the name. It's gone now. But mm. it was like a mom and pop's restaurant. Yeah, I couldn't do it. People were mean to me. I was like, I can't. I just want to get... I, I feel like I always felt like I was meant for something way bigger. I was like, I am sitting in this place. I'm in this town. And I know I should be over there. I don't know what it's like over there. But I want to be over there. You know, I don't know. I, di I didn't know the music game at the time. But I was like, I'm going to get there. I don't know how. Started mm -hmm. booking studios. I started writing songs, getting songwriters. I started doing everything that I could to just be there. Making connections. And I've used like a lot of my connections that I've made through other things for the music game, which is huge, because not a lot of people can say that. I see. Um, so you quit after three days. Um, in those three days, just curious, uh, or even with you know the, the stepdad gig, or uh, even the modeling stuff, um, craziest story, if you have one, while you were on the clock? 
Oh my goodness. Mm. Some girl broke my nose. Actually, at the at the hostess job, I was going out of the like doors that like swing back and forth to bring someone's like food to them, even though that wasn't my job. And some girl didn't say like that she was coming like in that direction, mm. and she like pushed the door in, and it got my nose, and that's when I quit. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, it was. Are you are you saying it was broken like literally broken, or that you're no, just using a figure of speech? It was broken. <laughs> Had to go to the hospital and everything. Yeah, yeah, oh <laughs> yeah. It was pretty bad. Does it look okay now? <laughs> <laughs> well, is that something that you've ever had? Is this? Have you ever touched your or played with your nose since? Or, uh, or? yeah, no, I did. Oh, I got you, it done for sure. Oh, you did. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I fixed all that. <laughs> okay. Was that because it was broken, or that was something that was inevitable? No. That's because I wanted to. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, they reset it, but I'm I'm huge in like if you don't like something, fix it. Like, mm. who cares what everyone thinks? Because it's like. You know, you. I mean, I guess you, you see things that you think you should be or what you should look like in Hollywood or whatever, but I just, I try to match how I feel on the inside on the outside. Like, you know, people don't take me seriously in music sometimes because they're like, oh, she looks like that. She's a model. She's this. Like, no, they don't know what's in here, you know, in my brain. Like, there's a lot going on up there. It's just because I look like this, just because I'm a bad bitch, okay, doesn't mean anything else. Like, I could do music. I'm allowed to do other things. You know, if you have talent, you have it in you, you have it in you. Mm. I see. Now, what about as far as um, <clears throat> as your school days? Um, you did you did end up doing a nursing program mm -hmm. as a backup, but just even earlier than that, in your school days, what type of kid were you in class back then? Um, and not in the nursing program exactly. Yeah. I'm talking about I mean, like middle I was school, just high always, school. I was super outgoing. I got in trouble a lot for the way I dressed. <laughs> um, always in the principal's office. I, I have ADHD, so I'm super hyper. Um, and I can't like keep focus sometimes. That's also like how music helps me because it helps me like, you know, stay grounded to one thing. It, like that's the only thing I can usually keep my mind on. Um, Cause I'm usually like all over the place. But uh, yeah, I was definitely that kid that was just like, I feel like people knew, like even then, it's weird to say, but like I knew, I was like, I don't belong here either. And thank God I left at sixth grade. And then after that, it was like, I was like, okay, I have no school. Well, I did, I was homeschooled. So I had to do like my work. Um, but it let me focus on like my piano and my voice and everything else and like studying. Like I wanted to know who, who this person was, who that person was, who did, you know, Lady Gaga work with, who did Britney Spears work with, who did all these people work with and try to just put it together on how they did what they did. I feel like back then it was a lot, easier than it is now because you know with social media and other people in the game you know everyone's a singer now everyone's a rapper now everybody wants to do that so I feel like you have to have an edge and you have to have something that sets you apart from that you know you did homeschooling how much homeschooling did you do what grades sixth grade all the way until mm. high school was over was that something that uh, you wanted to do or? yeah I always wanted to do it. <laughs> I did not like school. Too cool for school. Yeah, I didn't I didn't like it. It wasn't my thing. I just I felt like my mind was just on too many different things and I always like, you know, would watch shows and I was like, "Oh my god, all those kids." Like I researched that they did like, you know, when they were in their film, you know, and they I was like, "Well, they're in movies. How do they go to school?" And they're like, "They're homeschooled." I was like, "I want to be homeschooled too." And so yeah, it all worked out cuz look, I'm going to be in a movie with Master P. What? <laughs> That's not real life. <laughs> no. Uh, I understand with, with homeschooling, there's different ways to do it. Uh, sometimes it's their mother doing it. Sometimes there's a tutor. Sometimes it's <laughs> online classes. How did that actually work out for you? Yeah, I had, a, I had a teacher that I went like once a week. So I did all my tests at a school. I did all my homework at home. And then I'd go there and take my test. So I'm not dumb. Like I, I know something. I had to take tests at school. I had to do all like that in front of the teacher. So yeah, that was, that's how mine worked anyway. Homeschooling. You did have uh, homeschooling. Before that, you were in public or private? Yeah, I was in public school. Okay, public. So yeah. you, 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 you may be able to compare here, but judging uh, public school versus homeschool, your homeschooling, hindsight 2020, was that easy or hard overall mm, speaking? For me, it was easier. I was in public and private because I moved like to eight, nine different schools because um, I was bullied, but uh, it was easier for me because I went at my own pace. Like I said, like I'm sitting in a classroom and I'm like, what's that over there? Like I can't keep focus. I can't keep focus. And, and I just wanted to go out and do other things. And so being on my own pace and my own schedule was easier for me. When you do homeschooling, are you able to actually graduate earlier because you can go at your own pace or no? Yeah, you can. I mean, like not super earlier unless you're like really smart. <laughs> 
but I wasn't super smart. But I was smart. Um, yeah, I graduated at 17. Okay. Yeah, so I that's think, normal. I mean, 17, 17, 18. 18. 18? It, it yeah. depends on it when normal. a kid is enrolled. But mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and uh, social skills. How were your social skills being homeschooled? Was that ever lonely? Uh, no. I mean, I had some friends, but I'm the kind of person that has like very few. I have like a tight circle, even now, I feel like, because I've been through so much with like people. I tried like having all these different friends. I just couldn't do it. I feel like I'm a social person, but I'm also like an introvert, extrovert. I take on a lot of people's energies. Like when I'm at events or doing music or at a show or on stage, I, I take in everyone's energy with me. So then by the end of it, I'm exhausted and I need to like go be by myself for a little bit to recharge and then get back to it. <laughs> because you mentioned you are an outgoing person and yeah. I always wondered if somebody could still be an outgoing person or come out outgoing even yeah. though they went to homeschooling for that amount of years. I mean, yeah, I think so. I mean, like I said, 12. I was in voice, so I had that and I was like, had, I was in choir. I had like different stuff that I was involved in with my other lives, you know, cheerleading this, that, dance, whatever. So I feel like I had those other skills. But I feel like with my work life, I'm very outgoing. But in my personal life, I'm just at home, chilling with my crew. (laughs) How did stuff like homecoming and proms work for you back then? I didn't have one. But I went to a couple other people's with them. Mm. But I never went to my own. And I think I'm okay with that. Like, I've never was like, oh, I want to go dress up for prom. I was like, no, I want to go to the studio. <laughs> I see. Like, I want to do music. I want to do this. I did, like, the things I wanted to do when I was younger were, like, not what normal kids wanted to do, I feel like. Did you get to actually walk for graduation then or no? Yeah, we had, like, a homeschool walk for graduation. Not many kids, but I did. <laughs> my mom wanted to see it mostly. I did it for her. Mm. Now, uh, I would assume a high school reunion or a homeschool reunion, that's not something that happens. Probably not. Not, for, not <laughs> in your case. I don't case. know about it. <laughs> at, at this present time, do you have any children? I don't. You don't? No. Nope. In the event nope. you do have children, oh. because you've experienced public, private, yeah. and homeschooling, how would you dictate <clears throat> how your children would be taught? I think it just depends. I think, like, I would put them in school, a nice school, because people are crazy nowadays. Um, but I feel like they would be able to choose for themselves. Like if they're just like, this isn't for me, like I don't mm. like it and stuff. Like with my case, I was being bullied and stuff like that. So it was just like really hard for me to even do schoolwork as it is. You know, I had people waiting outside ready to jump me and stuff. It was pretty crazy. So I, I would want them to decide, I think. What were you being bullied for? Just my looks. Like I was always, I, I, I didn't have friends at school. At school, I wasn't very social because people didn't like me. They're like, oh, look what she's wearing or whatever. I was, I, I was always very expressive because I'm an artist. I'm artistic. So I was always, you know, in the corner listening to music or whatever. I got busted a couple times. They're like, you can't listen to Too Short at school, Lacey. <laughs> Oops. Um, so, yeah, I was just, I was pretty much by myself and, and I developed early. So maybe that was like a huge case of it, you know. I don't want to be like conceited or anything. But, uh, yeah, so they would just, they didn't like it, you know? So I, I dressed how I wanted to dress. I was how I was, and I was very expressive, and they just were jealous. And things got physical sometimes? Yeah, I got in a fight, like, three times. <laughs> Defending yourself? Yeah, yeah. It was pretty crazy. How'd you do in those fights? You know, I did pretty good. <laughs> did somebody teach you how to fight? Yeah, I've been in kickboxing, actually, since I was, like, young. Oh. So that's one of my favorite workouts. So, yeah, I was, I've been in kickboxing. So I kind of knew a thing or two, you know? The first one, I got jumped, so I couldn't help that. And the second one, I I figured it out. <laughs> now, somebody watching this, right, because they're listening to your story here, and they say, well, she did public, she did private, and then she had the opportunity to do homeschooling, so she kind of got out of general population, so to mm-hmm. speak, right? Mm-hmm. But maybe somebody watching this doesn't have that opportunity. Yeah. What do you say to somebody that's... And, People can be bullied uh, various ways. It could exactly. be mental, it could be physical, exactly. it could be cyber. Exactly, yeah. I what, mean, what do you say to somebody watching this that's you going just, through those motions? Yeah, you really just have to speak up because a lot of people don't. And it got super bad to the point where my mom even made the decision to pull me, even though I wanted to do that for a long time just because it was like the last straw. But you really have to speak up and be just honest with people around. I told people at school they didn't care, like the, the yard duties, they didn't care. Like people just, sometimes they're not on your team. So you really have to just make sure that you are heard, like really heard before again, like something bad goes back to what we were having, uh, talking about earlier. You just really, you have to speak up. Mm. And you tried. I tried to speak up, yeah. I mean, my mom just thought I didn't want to go to school, <laughs> which is kind of maybe half the case, but. 
So homeschooling finishes, right? Mm -hmm. Do you go into the nursing program right away? No, I just continued to do music. I think it was probably two years after that because I was just working on the music and I was just like, oh my gosh, it's not happening. Like, what am I doing wrong? What do I need to be doing? So then I was like, well, obviously this is not free. Studio time, producers, you know, beats, all of those things are not free. So I uh, did those odd end jobs and then I went to nursing school because I was like, okay, cool. I'll have that as a backup. I can pay for my studio time. Like I won't, you know, be a broke artist because a lot of people are. They, they start out and they're, you know, living in Hollywood doing, having to, you know, waitress or do odd end jobs to do their dreams, to make their dreams happen. And so I was like, well, I kind of want to skip that part you know, and go from there. And so I ended up doing that. It didn't even do it at all because this blew up and took off. So once I graduated, took my state boards, I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm not gonna be a nurse because now I'm doing music. So it worked out. <laughs> mm, in case see. somebody dies in this room, you know, I can help you. <laughs> nursing, the nursing program, was that easy or hard for you? That was really hard. That tested my limits because, you know, I'm very artistic. So I'm not really a book smart person. I don't I'm not really, I can't just like read and know things. I'm a, like a visual audio learner. Um, so that was, that was pretty difficult. But I got really, really good grades. Really good grades. Graduated with like honors and I was good. Now, I, sometimes when it comes to, you know, as you kind of mentioned there, you know, you got to pay for these things like studio time, mm -hmm. this, that, and the third. You would do odd end jobs, this, that, and the third. <clears throat> Never resorted to street activity or something of that nature to make money? Well, like hooker? No, <laughs> I mean, it mean? could be a variety. <laughs> oh, okay. People no. scam, they sell drugs, no, they steal. No, they do. no, no, no. I, uh, that's not even in my mentality to even be like that. Um, instead, I just took the modeling route. Mm, <laughs> so I, I just did that until I was able to fund that. And just curious, that uh, the nursing uh, situation, how long did you have to actually do that for? Was that like a two-year program? Or? Four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, too, you mentioned a few things. You mentioned that uh, you were listening to rap early, but then yeah. you also looked up to Britney Spears, right, at one yeah. point. Which, were you listening to rap first or pop um, first? Or in which side of the family was... No, I feel was... like it was like Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. I love her. She's like the best voice ever. Um, and then it was Lady Gaga. Um, and I just, my dad listened to rap. So okay. then I, then I was like, what? So then I come home, my mom's like, Lacey, what are you doing? You're not supposed to have that CD, you know, whatever. So like, cause back when CDs were a thing. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would, I would just, I was very diverse. Actually, one of my favorite genres is fifties. So it's so weird, right? Cause old soul, I guess. Um, but I'm super diverse in music. Like the music I listen to, I like the fifties, sixties, seventies. 80s, 90s, rap, you know, I, I, I like it all. Now, just a, a few more questions about your family. Um, you mentioned you had a sibling. I do. You're the older one. I'm the older one, yeah. Right. Uh, being the oldest, tough or sweet position to be in? <clears throat> I, don't know, I think it's easy. I think okay. it just depends on how your sibling is, though. My sister was easy. She okay. was very, very shy. She didn't want to talk to anyone. I had to be her voice for a while until she got into music and theater, too. And uh, now she's out of her shell. So now she can take care of herself. But for a while there, I was, I was her voice. <laughs> uh, I see. Kind of to total opposite or just a little opposite? Mm -hmm. or? I mean, we're both really involved in acting. She's in theater. She sings, too, as well. Um, so we're both... I think we connect on that level, but looks wise, yeah, we're completely opposite. And uh, somebody watching this also, they're the oldest of the family. Anything you would say to being the oldest, having that position mm -hmm. on the ladder? Just take care of your family, because you only get one. <laughs> now, speaking of your, your sister here, have you guys collaborated on stuff? Even back then, were you guys into working with each other or yeah. things were separate? Yeah, no, we are. She's actually helped me a lot because she went to school for performing arts and she, got trained, I guess, in like opera and different musical things. So when I have questions in like music or for acting, I got this, I was like, Stephanie, I have this new role in this movie with Master P, so I need help. So I called her and she like coached me, you know, she helped me run lines, she mm. helped me do all that. Like we're, we're like when we're together, we're always singing. We're always on YouTube making videos. We're always doing some type of something with music. It's like our life. So it was a uh, supportive atmosphere, not a competitive atmosphere between you. Yeah, two. I think, yeah, very much so. And your parents seem to be, I think you stated in this interview, <laughs> supportive from the beginning with the music. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and that yeah. lane there for you? Yeah, if my mom was here, she'd be like, I, was, I remember when she was little and she told me she wanted to do this and now she's doing it. 
She was crying at my music video the other day. <laughs> oh, I see. So my next question when it comes to mom is, uh, it's one thing for a parent to be supportive of what their child does. It's another for them to actually like what their child does. So in this case, does she actually like your music? She does. Yeah, she does. I know. Because in the beginning, she was like, wait, what are you saying? My daughter's cussing. Lacey. I was like, shit, sorry, mom. Like, so she would hear stuff and she's just like, oh my God, that's you? What? Because I'm very, I guess like I'm very, con how do you say it? Controversial? How do you say that word? Controversial. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I can't think say you got it. it. Yeah, okay. So, and so on my social media world or just me in general, which is me, uh, the, so the social media side of me is me anyways. And I'm just very out there. I'm very different. I just speak my mind. So when I say things, it makes her uncomfortable, you know? And a lot of my music is very, I guess I would say sexual, you know? Cause I'm playing to like my looks and me as a person. And I feel like more people need to be okay with stuff like that. You just, you know, cause I feel like everybody is so modest sometimes, you know, you get those people that are just like, oh my God, did she just swear that? Did she just say that? So um, my mom's a little bit like that, but she does support it and she does like it. <laughs> and just curious when it comes to that, uh, back then growing up, were you always like this with the sexual environment, sexual nature? Or were you more tomboy at first? No, or? I was never a tomboy. That was my sister. I was uh. always like this, always. I had like these shirts that I wanted to wear to school. My mom's like, Lacey, and I would like take it and like change at school. I'd still get in trouble for it. <laughs> you were wearing makeup early? I, I was wearing, yeah, I was wearing makeup early. I mean, I developed early, so I kind of just went that. with it. I was very like, yeah, I wanted to explore makeup and like, you know, sparkly stuff and glitter and all that kind of stuff, so yeah. Now, when it comes to music, you've performed in front of your mom? Yeah, yeah. She's seen a live performance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had like a couple smaller shows and stuff, like when I did the club stuff or whatever. Okay. They always they always wanted to book me as a model and we turned it around into the artist standpoint and we're like, well, she does music. So if you want to book her, you have to do it for the music. I see. <laughs> so it would be the music and then we'd be like, oh yeah, you can do meet and greet after that. But it was like that, because that's what I'm trying to get out and that's what I'm trying to do. And I think everyone's trying to shove me in a box of that well, they have no idea what's about to come. <laughs> now, for you, is that an easy or tough transition? For this what? box, the the box they're the people are putting mm, you in, and you're me, trying to get out. For me, it's easy because it's just who I am, you know, and I am just being me. But for them, I think it's hard because I also think people don't want to support that. There's a lot of people that didn't support my music in the beginning, and then when I started dropping more and more and more, and I was dropping videos, they're like okay, I didn't like you at first, but now I like you. And I was like, oh, okay, you're giving me a shot here. You know, you're not just judging the book on its cover, you know? So there's a bunch of people out there, you know, that wear crazy things or have crazy hair or whatever, and they're just, they're talented and they're good and they just know what they're doing and they're meant for that. I feel like, what would I do if I didn't do music? I feel like I, there's nothing like that I can think of, you know, other than just maybe be in the background doing music stuff. But I feel like I, I don't see myself doing anything else. Is it a different feeling performing in front of somebody like your mother in the audience when you know she's there? Mm, no, because I feel like I've done it my whole life. It's just mm. so natural. So when she's there, it might help me like maybe like a confidence boost, like backstage, be like, yeah, 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 okay, boom. And then I go out there, you know? Um, but yeah, she's super supportive. So I think if anything, it just helps. I see. Now, as far as your mom um, or your dad here, uh, best advice either of them have ever given you at this point? What's one thing that really... Stay true to yourself. That's probably, I always talk about that and I always say that and with, you know, with social media or magazines or music or whatever telling you one thing, you just always have to go back to who you are. You know, people always say, you're not gonna do music. Ugh, you're an artist, oh my God, no, just stick to modeling, like whatever. No, like you have to be you and just get out there. You have one life to live and do what you wanna do and do what's meant for you and you have to just play to your strengths and be yourself and not change with, you know, drugs coming into the picture or people or influences or boyfriends or girlfriends or this or that. Like you have to stay true to who you are. This is something that your mom said, dad said, both said? Well, they've both said it, but my mom probably is one person that drills that in my head all the time. Mm. Mm -hmm. 